Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 22nd of September. As always, we have the particular updates and there's not that many this week. New videos this week. So I dived into, well, what do you do if you're still running Windows or SQL 2012? The support is ending. And so now we need to look at either getting off of it or what are the various options for that extended security set of updates. So I go through all of that. And then also looking at the multi-tenant organization capability. So if I'm a company that has multiple entry tenants, what can I do to improve the experience when I'm using Teams or Viva or other apps so I don't see multiple of the same person and end up messaging or inviting the wrong one? So on to what's new on the compute side. So if I'm using Logic Apps with Azure Monitor Logs, well, I can now leverage the managed identity of the Logic App. So I enable the managed identity for my Logic App, and then what I can do in Azure Monitor Logs, I give that managed identity the required permission to the Azure Monitor Logs. And then what I can do is for the connector from the Logic App to Azure Monitor Logs, I can just say use the Logic Apps Managed Identity for the authentication type and it removes the need to store any kind of separate identities. It just makes that integration much, much better. And then the community gallery has gone GA. So we're used to the idea that we used to have, what was it the shared image gallery, now the Azure Compute uh, Gallery, that I have the ability to create images I want to share in my organization. Well, what I can now do, it's probably easier to just go and look at that. So now if I create this Azure Compute Gallery and I could change an existing one or just create a new one as part of the sharing, well, we see this option to share to public community gallery. So what this is letting me do is this Azure Compute Gallery I create, anyone would be able to now see it. So if I was to now, for example, go and create a new virtual machine, as part of the image, if I actually see all images, you'd see this option for community images. And I could now go and select one of these. Now it's giving you a big warning at the top. These are not verified or tested by Microsoft. But the key point is now I can easily go and share images I create with anyone. So this might be a certain Linux distribution wants to um, go ahead and share non-commercial images with people. Maybe I'm working on some project I wanna go ahead and share, but that makes it super easy to do that. Now, obviously these are not the Azure Marketplace images, so they're no support by Microsoft. You need to make sure you trust the publisher before you go ahead and leverage this. But now, hey, uh, I have that capability. Onto the storage side, so Defender for Storage malware scanning has gone GA. So what this enables me to do is in near real time, as I'm writing data to Blob, it's gonna do without any kind of agent, full malware scanning. So that's gonna work on both polymorphic, i.e. it changes the encryption key of the virus, but also metamorphic, i.e. it actually rewrites the virus. It will detect both of those types of malware. It can then generate security alerts, which can trigger all my different workflows I may have. And it's just gonna be priced based on the gigabytes of storage it actually scans. And I can cap that if I need to. So this is a really nice feature so that as maybe stuff's getting uploaded, hey, it scans it, it could quarantine it, whatever I need to do before maybe it's leveraged by other things. On the miscellaneous side, so there's a new timeline view for my Azure Monitor alerting. And I guess maybe we're just gonna look at this as well. It just makes it easier to maybe see the correlation between different things. So if I just go to monitoring and I go and look at my alerts, we'll see this view as a timeline. And so if I select this, I can now, I can see, well, there's a couple of different things happening. There's one on the far right over here. And then there's one earlier on well, I could extend this out and then actually see the specific resources that are having this. It shows me, for example, the number I can click on it and it'll actually show me, hey, what that alert actually was. 
So it helps me correlate what's actually happening. Um, if I am seeing those multiple alerts, maybe it makes it easier to see uh, a set of actions. GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps has gone GA. So one of the great things about GitHub is it's had this advanced security. It does things like treating code as data so it can find vulnerabilities in your code. It will search for different secrets, token types. It will go and check, hey, what dependencies do I have and do they have vulnerabilities? So all of these things would stop you, for example, checking in code with a secret within there. Well, now all of these things are available for Azure DevOps as well. So, hey, looking for vulnerabilities in your code, finding different types of tokens, secrets, shared access signatures, over 200 types um, in whatever you're committing, checking the dependencies you have. So, hey, I'm using some library that has a vulnerability. Hey, we recommend you go to this version instead. It would mitigate that. So now I'll get all of those things and what it will also do is it will give me a single pane of glass for those different alerts, but it can also then integrate into Defender for Cloud so it could bring alerts from GitHub, Azure DevOps, and everything else into that single experience. Um, so, hey, that's now GA. Azure Monitor Open Telemetry Distribution for Node.js and Python. So the whole point here is that Open Telemetry is this whole vendor neutral API as a way to drive logging and metrics, distributed traces. And what happens here is this is a nice little package where it's taking those capabilities, but it's helping you easily integrate it with Azure Monitor App Insights as the target. So some of the additional benefits you'll get is, hey, Azure AD authentication, um, offline storage, automatic retries, You'll get the App Insights standard metrics. It can preserve traces using the App Insights SDKs and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm still getting the benefits of the open nature of this, but it's just bundling things together and adding on some Azure niceness on top of that. And then finally, Azure Update Manager has gone GA. Now this was previously known as Update Management Center, but now it's Azure Update Manager. So this replaces the old solution. So the old solution used to rely on Azure Automation, the Azure Monitor Agent, which talked to a Log Analytics workspace. So there are a whole bunch of components and, and different aspects to it. This removes all of those. It uses its own native store for state. So it's a full SaaS solution for both Windows and Linux patching. These machines can be anywhere. Now that if they're in Azure, it's just gonna use the regular Azure VM agent. If it's somewhere else, I need to Arc enable it and it will use the connected machine agent. I can then group machines based on resource group, based on tagging, subscription, a whole bunch of other things to then drive scheduled patching of them. I have full control over all of the, the rollout of this. So it's just a, a great solution for managing my updates. And that was it. Told you it was a pretty quick update week. I hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.